When majoring in biology, you'll take several courses that cover the larger subdivisions of the major. The goal is to make students well-rounded in the fundamentals of biology such as genetics, physiology, evolution, ecology, botany, and so on. Your curriculum will cover the theory and methods behind modern concepts that are used in the field. In your first year, you will start with the history of life and biology, starting from the inception of the first known life forms through the expansion of organisms and diversity now. You will then focus on the cell and all of its components and how they function together to maintain the cell and communicate with other cells. You will then begin to learn how plant cells differ from animal cells and some of the life cycles of different species of plants. You will revisit concepts you likely learned in high school like glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, how proteins are made, gene expression, and many more. Once you've created this general understanding of biology, you will expand your understanding by branching into the different fields. In your second year, you will then begin to learn the fundamentals of ecology and evolution. These courses will be reinforced your final year and are covered in one class. In addition, you will learn the fundamentals of genetics, which will include topics like how the cell replicates, the fine details of protein production, and the passing of genes from parents to children. Some of this material will overlap with the introductory courses from your freshman year, so it's important to commit it to memory. You will be presented options to concentrate on a specific subfield in biology, which will largely depend on your prospective university's availability. Four concentrations that you will likely see at your school are anatomy and physiology, molecular and cellular biology, marine biology, and lastly, ecology and evolutionary biology. The two most common concentrations that students go into are the anatomy and physiology concentration and the molecular and cellular biology concentration because there are more job opportunities within these concentrations and both can satisfy prereqs for graduate schools to later obtain a PhD or pre-health professions. In the anatomy and physiology concentration, you take extra classes learning about anatomical structures of various organisms as well as their physiology. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the word physiology, it describes a branch of biology that covers the normal functions of biological organisms. For example, in your lecture lesson, you might study how oxygen moves from your lungs to your blood and how your blood delivers that oxygen throughout your body. In your lab, you may use O2 monitors to demonstrate how the body's consumption of oxygen differs as physical activity increases. This concentration is very common for students who are preparing for a career in the health sciences such as doctors, physician assistants, nurses, dentists, pharmacists, and much more. You will have rigorous lecture and lab courses that will focus on new discoveries in structure and function. As an anatomy physiology concentration, you could start work as an exercise physiologist where you might develop exercise routines for personal health or athletic purposes for clients in order to boost their cardiovascular systems. There are very few direct career paths for biology majors with this concentration because most use this concentration to satisfy prereqs for future schooling. However, you would also be qualified for lab tech positions or sales roles requiring a science background. The other most common concentration is molecular and cellular biology. In this concentration, you will take more classes that focus specifically on the cell, cellular structures, how cells replicate, specific genes within DNA, and how they code for proteins within cells, and everything you could ever need to know about the individual cells of an organism. This concentration is densely packed with lecture and correlating labs. You will be exposed to topics such as proper laboratory techniques, courses on nucleic acids, genetics, microbiology, immunology, and virology, which is the study of viruses. This concentration helps students prepare for going on to work in labs, in biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, and various research. For example, if you want to be part of the ongoing research for the improved treatment and eventually cure for HIV, this concentration would be a good path for you and would lay the foundation for your graduate school career as a PhD. Within the cellular and molecular biology concentration, about 25% go to graduate school, 50% of graduates use this degree for healthcare professions such as dentistry, medical school, nursing, pharmacy, etc., and the remaining 25% enter directly into entry-level industry jobs. Next there is marine biology. Marine biology is a concentration that provides a lot of avenues of interest and this concentration encompasses the study of marine organisms and oceanic habitats including classification, structure and function, ecology and physiology of these organisms, conservation, and environmental and evolutionary issues related to these organisms and their habitats. A majority of marine biology jobs are research-based, which typically involves species inventories, testing and monitoring sea creatures exposed to pollutants, 
collecting and testing ocean samples, preserving specimens and samples of unknown species and diseases, and mapping the distribution, ranges, or movements of marine populations. Although some biologists in this field can hold a bachelor's degree, there is a strong pressure for publishing research and as a result a majority of these positions are held by PhDs. Even still, it is important to note that employment in the field is limited and competition for these jobs is very high. Job titles for marine biologists can include things like marine biologist, director of conservation, research biologist, and marine biologist consultant. These are just a few examples of job titles, but you will get a better idea of what the job actually consists of by reading the job description and also going to an interview. Then we have ecology and evolutionary biology. In this subfield, you look at all biological organisms ranging from the level of the individual to the overall ecosystem, their responses to the environment on evolutionary and ecological timescales, and conservation. In this concentration, one thing you will study is humans' impact on natural habitats and the ways we can reduce our impact on the environment. Similar to marine biologists' concentration, ecologists and evolutionary biologists conduct a lot of field research and analyze the data. In this concentration, you can find jobs in various levels of government working in conservation, and you can teach at different levels of education. With a background in ecology and environmental conservation, you could also work as a consultant or environmental specialist in the private or public sector, overseeing various construction projects from start to finish, including but not limited to designing, planning, contracting, execution, and completion. For example, you might work with clients and help them obtain necessary building permits and oversee that proper environmental guidelines are being followed. Because biology is such a vast field and the specific names of concentrations will vary greatly based on your campus, you will want to do your research ahead of time. For example, you could concentrate in toxicology, microbiology, human biology, neurobiology, pharmacology, plant biology, zoology, and genetics, just to name a few. The number of concentration your school has and the specific names will largely depend on your school's size, the size of the biology department, and their reputation and specialty. This being said, all these concentrations would fall into one of the four main concentrations listed earlier. An example of this, not all schools will have a human biology concentration, but most if not all schools will have a version of the anatomy and physiology concentration. The reason for this is human biology is a more focused and a more zoomed in version of anatomy and physiology and would fall under that concentration. One important thing I've mentioned in many other videos but I will repeat here is that for many of the sciences including biology, just achieving a bachelor's degree is often not enough if you want to be in charge of your own research. Right out of college with just a bachelor's degree, you are competing with other scientists that have years of experience in your field. In order to have the opportunity to manage and conduct your own research, you likely need a PhD or 5-8 to eight years of hands-on experience working under veterans of your field. In the sciences, experience is everything and you should take advantage of internship and research opportunities while you're in school to better prepare yourself for post-graduation life. If you want to obtain a job related to your four-year degree but do not want to attend more school, your best options are sales and consulting related positions that require a biological background or working in a lab as a tech or assistant. You will be able to gain entry level positions in biotechnology companies, pharmaceutical companies, and various science sectors that require lab work, but upwards mobility in the company will be difficult without a master's or PhD. So if your goals include working on the next breakthrough in science, then a master's and even a PhD are probably the best routes for you. Support courses are also a large bulk of the biology curriculum, and students are expected to be well-rounded in math and science, especially if you want to go to med school. You will be required to take chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, calculus, and statistics, although you won't use very much physics or calc in your bio courses, they are classes you just have to get through. Now as some final notes, there are a lot of students that go into biology with the goal of getting into medical school, which is required if you want to become a doctor or surgeon, which is a great path to go of course. But after four years of college, many students say they are done with school and end up not going to med school and now they just have a bachelor's degree and like stated before, this can limit you in career opportunities. Be sure to consider this and have a few backup plans mapped out just in case. Another thing to keep in mind is that many students who go into biology and switch their majors end up switching into kinesiology. This is one of the most common transitions and it usually happens because those students end up failing their biology courses or just don't have interest in the subject after all. Kinesiology requires less math and physics and would be an easy transition for someone who enjoys the sciences but is struggling with some of the biology support courses like chemistry, physics, and calculus. 
This major would also be a good transition for someone who wants to focus more on health, fitness, and how the body moves. Some science, but does not require as much science and math knowledge. Then kinesiology students usually need further education and as an example can go into physical therapy school to become a licensed physical therapist. This is not meant to turn you off the biology major, but these occurrences happen enough where you should be aware of them because it may help you down the road. If you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.